What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is about every starfighter used by the Confederacy of Independent Systems, including their allies. If it's an obscure ship, I will put a picture of its source on the bottom of the screen. First up is the Advanced Droid Starfighter, built by the Trade Federation, and this was actually the successor to the Vulture Droid. It was nearly identical to its predecessor in atmosphere, but out in space, it was much faster, maneuverable, and more powerful. In the same vein, we have the Advanced Geonosian Fighter, which was an improvement on the Nantex class, and which saw heavy use during the first battle of Serapin. The Amphibious Fighter was actually of Mon Calamari design, brought into the CIS by the Mon Cala Commander Marai, who was seen as a traitor to his people. The Belbulub 22 Starfighter was manufactured by the obscure company Phaethon Ultra Scalable Assemblies, one of which was used by General Grievous, who named his Starfighter the Solus One. And they also produced the Belbulub 24 Strike Bomber, which was used most notably by the Separatist holdout Geyser Delso on the planet Mustafar. The C-73 Tracker Starfighter predated the Z-95 Headhunter and was the last design of Subpro Corporation before they partnered with Incom Corporation, making this CIS ship one of the closest in design to a Republic Starfighter. This prototype vehicle never saw mass production, since CC-10 stole it and destroyed the ship and its factory, but this would have been incredible to see in combat, with its heavy blaster cannons and 24 proton torpedo capacity. The Commerce Guild Advanced Bomber was donated to the CIS by Shu Mai, along with the stronger and more powerful Enhanced Bomber. Suro Sub manufactured this ship, originally designed for protection of their own assets, but they ended up being sold in large quantities to the CIS during the Clone Wars. When Solus seceded from the Empire, many of these ships were used to blow apart TIE fighters. The droid Tri-Fighter was one of the most common starfighters in the CIS Navy, earning this role due to their high speed, maneuverability, and armament of four laser cannons, and variable payloads of concussion missiles, proton torpedoes, and the feared buzz droids. The Genevex class Fanblade Starfighter was used by Asajj Ventress during the Battle of Sullust, and was an incredibly unique design, being produced by the Geonosian company Hoopla Passatisk Shipwrights Collective. The Hex Bomber got their name from carrying the deadly Hex Warhead. The Hex Bomber got its name from carrying the deadly Hex Warheads, but they were critiqued for being incredibly slow and difficult to pilot. Hunter Seeker droids were a strange starfighter that was produced by the Colicoid Creation Nest, which makes sense when you realize that this was based on the design of a droidica. These were often used to protect the C9979 transports, where they would float through space in this curled up ball form. The Hyena Bomber was another staple of the CIS, being their primary bomber, that was also loved for its variable payload, with similarly low costs and maintenance of its brother the Vulture Droid. The Mankvim 814 Light Interceptor, also known as the Techno Union Starfighter, was made by the same people who gave us the Belbulub 22 at 15,000 credits, which was one-tenth the cost of an X-Wing, while being nearly as fast as the TIE Defender, the fastest TIE Fighter variant. The Nantex-class Territorial Defense Starfighter was also built by the Geonosians and were primarily used to defend droid facilities on their homeworld, and which had this crazy tech that provided data to the pilot via smells in the scent stimulator mask that interfaced with the Geonosian biology. The Nova Sword Space Superiority Fighter was built by Sublight Products Corporations and was intended to outcompete the Z-95 Headhunter, having a great balance of speed, shields, and armament that allowed it to be used as an interceptor, light bomber, or scout ship. The Porax-38 Starfighter was a part of the Utapal Sky Force, with its long-distance sensor-jamming equipment and powerful deflector shields, which gave rise to the Rogue-class Starfighter. This was also known as the MagnaGuard Starfighter, because it was used by the elite MagnaGuard droids, but also one of these was given to Cad Bane by Darth Sidious. The Seboath Defender was a heavy assault starfighter, a part of the mercenary forces of Captain Kavik Toth, who allied himself with the CIS. He also commanded Seboath Starfighters, which were similar in speed and armament to the X-Wing. Our Charl Engineering, the company run by religious bugs that gave us the Hailfire-class droid tank, also produced the Scarab-class droid starfighter, which was the predecessor to the Vulture droid. One of the notable differences was that it was piloted by a separate droid, and could switch on or off the guidance of a droid control ship. There are no images for the Spearhead ship, but it was a kamikaze type of droid fighter, and was a part of a tactic that worked very well during the Battle of Coruscant. Another prototype was the Tempest Zero, 
which was flown by the heralded CIS hero Toffin Vane. He was able to get this mass-produced at Harco Station, and a couple of its most unique features include a harpoon gun, backwards-facing laser cannon perfect for a dogfight, and the fact that it didn't use an astromech, instead having this cool XT droid. The Trade Federation droid bomber was another adaptation of the Vulture design, which had four laser cannons, high-capacity bomb bays, along with thick plate armor and strong shields. Another one without any images is the Turbo Storm class gunship, which was manufactured by Sinar Fleet Systems, the same people that gave us the TIE Fighter series. It was said to be similar in design to the GAT-12 Skip Ray Blast Boat, and had two of the KX-4 laser cannon turrets, which we saw in the Phantom, along with a mini-missile launcher and a flamethrower attached to the belly of this ship. The Umbaran Starfighter was of course designed by the mysterious Umbaran people, and featured some of the most complicated holographic controls in the galaxy, along with a ray-shielded cockpit, plasma cannons, and wing-mounted missile pods. And last, but definitely not least, is perhaps the most iconic droid starfighter of the CIS, the Vulture Droid. A third of the price of a TIE Fighter, one-seventh that of an X-Wing, while still being faster than the latter, and more powerful than the former, this starfighter was ubiquitous throughout the Clone Wars for a good reason. Combine that with the often unappreciated ability to have these droids just attach themselves to the outside of other CIS ships, which allowed for them to be great escorts that could swarm their Republic opponents in staggering numbers. So that's it for every CIS starfighter. If I missed any, be sure to point them out in the comments down below, and I'll eventually make a separate video for them, and I'll also work towards making a video for each of these ships that I mentioned, so keep an eye out for those in the future. But most important of all, remember, the CIS is the most diverse and badass militaries in Star Wars, and the Force will be with you, always.